All right, we're live. All right, what's up, guys? Sean Bowen, Full Circle Investment Group, wholesalingoutofthebox.com. Uh, again, lunchtime live and coming here for a little bit and talk with you guys. Uh, today, we're going to specifically talk about uh, the six most common newbie questions uh, that I get a lot of and a lot of people ask just in general in the market, right? So I'm going to try to go over some of those. And remember, guys, Ashley's going to put up the uh, link here. If you want to go live and ask questions and talk with us back and forth, uh, we try to keep these things right around 30 minutes for you, a little lunchtime talk and real estate talk. But um, yeah, if you need to go live and ask some questions while we're doing this, please feel free to do so. If not, would love to see some comments in the comment section and um, talk with us, guys. Interact with us. I love this part of this. And this is why we do these is try to help you guys. Um, so let's get into them. Uh, six of the most common newbie questions that I see. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is, is wholesaling illegal? Um, answer that is no. <laughs> Question number two is, how do you find a mentor? And that's what we can go over a little bit. Uh, how do you find motivated sellers? Uh, what should I say to the seller uh, if I have no money and I'm saying I'm buying their home? Um, and then another one would be number five is how much do I offer on their home? Uh, and finally, number six is how do I find buyers? Okay, so let's go back to the top and start about number one. Um, is wholesaling illegal? And the answer to that is no. Okay, so how that looks is, is when you sign a contract with a seller and you're the buyer, you now have what's called equitable interest, okay? So that means that you're a principal in the transaction. The reason for being a licensed agent is when you're not part of the transaction and you're giving advice into something, okay? So that's the difference between being licensed and not. So homeowner, buyer, you know, if it's just Joe Schmo and you, uh, Joe the seller, you as the buyer, um, it's a very simple transaction, right? And that's where you get into your purchase and sale agreement. It says you're buying, they're selling, and cost and all you know the criteria that go or like the set agreement. Okay. Um, so no, illegal is not the word for wholesaling, but you have to have equitable interest, meaning that you have to have a signed document that says purchase and sale agreement and or you need to be in a written joint venture agreement with somebody that is in contract. So that example would be is somebody wants to joint venture with you and says, hey, I have a deal, but they want to partner with you. OK, and they say, I have the deal. You bring a buyer. That's let's get that joint venture signed up so that we can be equitable. Right. We have an equitable interest in it. All right. The second one that we're going to go to is um, how to find a mentor. This is one that I speak a lot to because we do help with this. If you're interested in that kind of stuff and mentorship and pieces of this puzzle to try to get things put together, um, go to wholesalingoutofthebox.com and check us out. We've got a few things there that will help you get set up, the fundamentals, um, and, and get you going. Right. There's a lot of things out there, um, but there's very base pieces you need in order to do this business. So finding a mentor is is going to a person that is speaking to to what's going on. Right. Speaking about wholesaling, speaking about the business, talking about how it's done and vetting them. So if that were to be somebody to come to me, I would say, what would you like to see? And if I would grow into somebody else, I would say, hey. I want you to show me some properties that you've closed on. I want you to show me some HUD statements that you've actually made money on, right? And I want you to be very transparent with me with what you do, okay? If that person is not willing to do that, that's probably not a good fit for you, right? So again, back to us. If you're looking for somebody to do that, please come to us. Ask us those questions. 100% uh, transparency up front is what we're looking to do, right? We are in the business. We're doing it day to day. Um, we do have operating procedures and standard operating procedures of that, that everything has to be followed. Um, and that's how we do the business. So anybody that you're looking to mentor you or looking to grow to do what they do, vet them, ask them these questions. If they're not comfortable with answering those, maybe it's not a good fit. Maybe they're not doing what they really say they can do. Okay. Um, number three, how do I find motivated sellers? This is a really good one because it gets into what is considered motivated, right? So motivated to me is you have to sell 
not that you want to sell. Okay. So a really good example would be what makes you want, what makes you have to sell today versus looking for retail, willing to list it for a little bit online um, and hang out for a while and wait. We see those as motivation keys, right? So maybe you're looking for people that are behind in taxes. Um, they can't pay for money owed, like the taxes against the property for so much time. It's just going to stack up, right? Eventually, if they don't pay that, they will lose the property to the city. Um, what if there's code enforcement issues where you're having somebody in the city come around, you can't cut the grass or you have trash on the property that you're not cleaning up. Um, the property's vacant. Maybe it's been vandalized, right? Those are code issues that are going to get fined and you get notifications for that and you have to pay for it. Um, what if there's a tired landlord that's, you know, dealing with not collecting money? They're going to be filing for evictions, right? So those are very motivated people. And of course, the other one that you get into is probate. What if you get into a state? What if you get into a situation where somebody inherited a piece of real estate? Somebody, um, let's say you, you were willed or somebody left it to you in a will. Uh, these are very motivated factors, right? Um, there's obviously lower motivation, which is the absentee owner, the pre foreclosures and the equity positions. But if you're just getting started in this business, you want to go to the people that have the highest motivation. And those are what we call the low hanging fruit or the very bottom that take a lot harder to get the list. You've got to take the time and build it. Um, you've got to go to the courthouse. You've got to request it via FOIA request. There's a lot of things you got to do to do that. That's usually the less easy route, which a lot less people go after because it's harder to get. All right. So it's more niche or more niche to go in and take a look at and build. And then, of course, follow up and then talking with those people about how you can help them. OK, um, so motivated sellers would be those those items I would go for evictions, code enforcement, tax delinquent and probate. Those would be your highest motivated sellers. Um, the next one would be is what should I say to a seller? Right. Um, the question is not really what you say to a seller. It's more of how you can help them in their situation. So I look at that where I say. Why, what can I help you solve today? And instead of it being focused on price, I'd be more focused on the why, right? And I think that's the big uh, hurdle that people miss in this industry is, are you truly trying to help somebody? Are you truly trying to help a seller solve their problem um, and get them away from their situation and at the right time frame, at the right number, and then really know your numbers, right? So the question I, I really, you know, what should I say to a seller? It's really, what am I asking? And the asking is, is so why are you looking to sell, right? Like what, what's the reason you're selling today? And there's usually a lot of objections when you first get on the phone call, right? You've got, you know, I don't know who you are. So there's a wall up there. Well, you sent me a flyer, you give me a price. Um, you get a lot of those. Um, and then you really need to dive into their why and ultimately back into asking about some repair costs, asking about, you know, big ticket items, roof, windows, um, flooring, exterior siding, paint, electrical, plumbing. Um, that kind of stuff is the big ticket number to where you can ultimately be able to start working into how to make them an offer. OK, but those are the, the questions that you need to ask is like, why are they selling? A little bit of information about the property, um, but more so the why and try to help solve their why. Listen to their why. And that's that's where you're going to try to go and help the seller in order to figure out um, what you're saying to a seller isn't as important as to listening to the seller, I think. Um, all right. The next one is, is how much do I offer on their home? This is a really good one. Uh, this one goes into where I feel like a lot of people are getting to the how do you make an offer, but it's how do you get to it, right? And it's understanding numbers. So if you're local here to Hampton Roads, we do a property walkthrough once a month, and we're going to start getting these going again where we're on site live and you guys can join us um, where we do these. We go to either our properties or properties we have on a contract, and we walk you through to figure out how to estimate, right? How do you estimate properties? How do you 
you know, I get a lot of people talking about square footage this, and I could take a square footage off of some number that came from Texas, and I'm going to use it here in Virginia. The cost of materials are different. The cost of labor is different. The cost of living is different. So we like to know locally, right, like where that number is based on person that's doing the business, right? So we talk about that, like how much on a roof per square foot of a house, if I'm replacing a 30-year architectural shingle, what's that cost? Um, siding, how much the square foot, and then that cost, right? So all that backs into the big ticket number to be able to make what's called the Mayo offer. That's max allowable offer. So the point of all this is to really back into their number and understand how you're going to make that offer from your Mayo, right? So it's very important is to understand the rehab number. How to make that rehab number in that offer is very, very specific, right? So let's just say for the Hampton Roads market, and I would say for Virginia's market, we're probably all close enough to the same, but between 70 and 75% loan to value. So what that looks like is, is after repair value or ARV times 70%, you're going to minus off your repair number, minus out your wholesale fee, and that's your offer to the seller. Obviously making that offer a little bit lower to start and then start to raise up to where your max allowable offer hits. That's, that's what you're focusing on. But Really understanding the repair number and being solid with your numbers is most important. So if you guys are interested, again, check us out at wholesalingoutofthebox.com. You can sign up for one of those meetings and uh, let's get you those numbers. And get very comfortable with them. Uh, let me stop here for a second because we're right on our last question. But uh, do we have anybody that has any questions in here? Um, give it a second to see if you guys have anything that came up. Try to pay attention to these things on the side over here. Um, Ashley's got the, uh, the feed out there for you guys. So if you want to check it out and, uh, go ahead and join us over there. Um, I'm going to keep going here. So guys, the last one that I get a lot of is how do I find buyers? And I always tell guys, like, it's not as important to find buyers as it is to find a deal. If the deal is real. Then you will find buyers. Now, the other way around that is, is if you're in a market specifically, you should have already done the research in that area, which is the why am I actually researching this area to, to be in to begin with? Um, that's doing market analysis, doing your Zillow big search down to you know your 90 to 60 day research, which behind that comes the buyers, right? So I think finding buyers is easier than finding deals, right? And that's the that's the hard part about this. So I say. If you're looking for buyers, then just search the same area you were in. You know, if you're driving for dollars, you also can see those guys that are doing rehabs. Um, if you're seeing um, dumpsters in front of homes um, and that you're going by or seeing work being done, right? Just walk up to the door, look at the permit, take a picture. There's your guy, right? Um, it's a lot easier to find these guys, but then have a real talk with them, right? You know, they bought it because they're you're standing or looking at the home that they bought, but back into their number. You know, understand what they do, understand why they offer what they offer um, and be very clear on what they're looking for. So I don't think it's as important to find buyers right off the bat. I think if you stay within your formulas of 70 to 75 percent loan to value and you back into your number there, your buyer pool is already big enough as it is. This will deal with cash buyers. This will do a hard money lender borrowers that are you know buying deals, guys that are using credit lines. OK, so. Finding buyers is a lot easier than it is to find sellers and the vetting process that goes behind that needs to be a very real one. Right. So a lot of guys are, I see online nowadays that are like, I'm looking for cash buyers in the 757. All of a sudden you see a ton of emails and a ton of phone numbers. My question to that is what's the vetting behind it? Right. Take the time to really have that talk. Um, look for a proof of funds letter, really dig into that buyer that says they're the buyer and ask them how they do it. All right. So that you can have that real honest conversation. And that's it, guys. Uh, kind of short today just because it's, you know, talking to 30 minutes, but talking into the six most common things that I get questions asked all the time from guys that are brand new, ladies that are brand new um, and just getting into the industry. You know, those are the fundamentals of understanding what you're doing. Even if you're in the industry and maybe you're trying to, you know, you've been in for a little bit, but you're trying to make it a little bit more scalable. Um, those are the same things and you really need to focus on in order to make this a scalable business. Um, if you're tracking your numbers, 
that's one of the big things I always talk about. But if you're tracking your numbers, you will be able to control the de- control the deals, control the lead flow, know where your best marketing is coming from. All that makes sense. So again, anybody that's here, you know, I think we've got a few people watching, but we try to do these lunchtime lives and uh, try to interact with you guys. And if not, hopefully those watching the replay later, um, you get some value out of this and be able to use this talk and this information to be able to help you do either your first deal or your next few deals. Um, so yeah, if we have anybody in here that's, uh, has any questions, come on and bring it live. If you, if this is helpful for you guys, please share this feed. Um, this is something we're building up. This is something that we're trying to do in this show and hopefully get it out there and help people, um, and have that talk. Um, also, if you guys are watching this on the replay and if you hung out this long, uh, join us every Sunday, um, in Virginia Wholesale Real Estate, that's our Facebook group, where we go live for an hour from 5 to 6 p.m. on Sundays. And we just go live on any Q&A that you have dealing with wholesaling. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be anything specific, um, but it's to exactly wholesaling. You know, it could be brand new people, guys that are experienced. Um, there's a lot of people in that group that have joined those Sundays and getting traction and doing deals. Um, and I'm looking forward to watching them grow. So, that's what we're here for, guys. We're here to help you as much as we can. Uh, we're always here. So if you want to reach out to us, PM me, you know, PM us in the group, or wherever you found us, right? Write us a message and and talk with us and connect with us because that's what we're here to try to help you guys do. Um, but, guys, I think uh, if we don't have any questions, we'll go ahead and finish the one out today. But um, I appreciate you guys being here. And if uh, we don't have anything, I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Talk to you soon. Later.